Welcome back to another edition of Modern Mondays here at Guardian Games in Portland, Oregon. We're Portland Paper. I'm Travis Cooper, hanging out with producer, Ian. commentator, uh, IT extraordinaire, Ian Lunger. And we're going to watch four rounds of Analog Modern Magic. It looks like for round one, we have Ezra Crosman on Titan Shift playing Mike Lee on Paradoxical Urza. Uh, it's kind of a multi-generational uh, event here at Guardian. Ezra, Ezra and his dad also play. Um, and yeah, what do you think about the matchup? Uh, I feel like this is going to be a race. So um, neither deck is particularly looking to interact with the other deck. They're both looking to do their thing and kill the opponent. So, um, however, I do think that Paradoxical Urza is going to have some very useful cards post-board. Huh. Yeah, I'm sort of on the side of Titan Shift in terms of uh, who is favored for the matchup. I feel like uh, Urza is going to try to just develop a very large board and draw a bunch of cards and basically ha have inevitability. Um, but I don't think, although we'll find out if Mike's playing a combo version, I don't think there is an infinite combo in Mike's deck. Although I could be wrong about that, but if there's not, I feel like you know, Ezra can deal with a huge board of Thopters and an Urza grinding out some card advantage just by winning on turn number five, or maybe four. That is the nice thing about this Titan Shift deck, is it can fairly easily just juke around the plan of go wide from the other player. They don't have to connect with creatures to, um, to knock out their opponent. And Titan having Trample is fairly relevant, too. Like Ezra's taken the uh, maximum mana base punishment so far. Fetch shocking twice. Yeah, I feel Ezra's wanting to line up mountains with these windswept heaths, which those are only, for a mountain, it's only going to be able to get the dual lands here. And um, perhaps doing some kind of maybe hedging for natural Valakut triggers if you don't have a card um, like Prismatic Omen out which I know that Ezra's playing a couple copies of in his deck. Yeah, it looks like also a Courser of Crufix in hand, which is kind of an interesting include, maybe a hedge against burn. Um, kind of a great blocker and a nice way to can kind of continue to get value. This deck uh, can run out of cards in hand fairly quickly. And... Mike just fetching up the now ubiquitous Snowlands. Yeah. We'll stay off that topic this evening. <laughs> or at least we'll give it three rounds before we get on it. And the Danesite card. Urza shows up with a buddy. It feels too soon. Does it feel too soon? It feels too soon. Well, Ezra is going to have access to at least five mana this next turn. And... True. Mike currently has access to three additional mana. Yeah, I mean, I. So it'd have to be a pretty large construct to kill Ezra next turn, which isn't, um, you know, outside of the realm of possibilities, but would would take a lot of pretty good setup. And Mike's down to just island plus unknown in hand. Yeah, imagining. We'll see the courser from Ezra if he doesn't have anything else interesting this turn. Uh, six, six mana or more kind of tends to be the sweet spot for this deck. So uh, this is kind of that that empty space in between for the deck where there oftentimes are not that many great plays. It's maybe chaining together a couple smaller things. So Ezra did play his land for turn, which would suggest that uh, he's not going to play Courser. So I would expect to see something else. Looks like maybe a there. I think there's a Tribe Elder in hand, as well as maybe a Sweltering Sons. Although I don't think I would run out the Sweltering Sons. I don't think there's a Lightning Bolt hanging out there too. So Ezra might have wanted to play the Tribe Elder for ramp and then cycle the Sweltering Sons. Uh, the cycle on Sweltering Suns, I believe, is three. three yeah. yeah, so I actually, 
I think maybe Ezra should have played the Corsair yeah should have played yeah. the Corsair, um, possibly just kind of like went on autopilot playing uh, his land for turn and then kind of realizing. Ah, uh, it might have been better to play the Corsair. Did did he have any knowledge of the top of his deck there? I do not think he did because okay. we just found a land off that uh, search for tomorrow during upkeep. And we're going to get a Mox Amber after activating Urza. That gets to be cast without paying its mana cost. Mana I mean, cost being zero. This <laughs> is good for Ezra. If, if uh, Mike is having to activate Urza here, there's a lot of air in this paradoxical Urza deck, so there are a lot of things that Mike can hit that are that don't particularly concern Ezra. So if we're not actually seeing um, paradoxical outcome and go off this turn by Mike, it's uh it's it spells good things for Ezra's side. So we get an attack with a fairly large construct, a block, and then a sacrifice to get another mountain out for Ezra. And so next turn we're gonna hit the magical number of Seven mountains, which would put Mike down to one if we happen to have uh, escape shift in hand. Well, and the other nice thing too is, uh, well, I guess we're not going to see it. Okay, Ezra has a bolt left over as well, so this is going to end up being lethal. And uh, maybe float some mana. Probably want to float here. This will work. You I would have to float mana before you cast uh, Escape Shift and Pass Priority, which is that's an awkward thing with how that works. It will, Ezra still will be able to cast the Bolt from the Valakut, um, but I think it would, as you said, it, it would have been maybe more optimal to uh, to do it the way that you mentioned. It's possible we missed a fetch on Mike's side. It looks like Ezra takes game one. All right, Travis, so this match gets a lot more interesting post-board. What do we got? So these Paradoxical Urza decks, I believe, has uh, have access to a number of uh, counter spells. Um, and I, most Titan Shift lists have access to Damping Sphere. So that's kind of what I'm expecting to see primarily on both sides, as well as I think Ezra probably has access to, it looks like an Ancient Grudge, some Artifact Hate, possibly Collector Oof. Yeah, I, it's interesting, the development of the Urza list and the sort of different flavors of them. You have your kind of combo Jeskai Ascendancy list, which is trying to do a turn two, three, four combo, and you're kind of all into the Thopter combo plan. Um, and then there is your Thopter Sword combo that is, plays a really good mid-range kind of like Splinter Twin-esque deck where you present a lot of cards that just generate value on their own, but then you have a combo that you can happen out of nowhere. And then you have like this new iteration, which is sort of leaning more on the generating lots of card draw with paradoxical outcome and lots of thopters are tokens with um, like Sahili uh, and Sai plus Urza. And it sort of gives it gives up on the I, I win button, uh, but just really cashes in on the card advantage aspect of the deck. Um, but I feel like those decks are kind of less threatening to the other combo decks where you you can't actually race them um, without being afraid of, you know, the Urza deck comboing off themselves. And it looks like I actually misspoke earlier. It looks like uh, most Urza outcome players are actually not playing a lot of sideboard counter magic. So um, looks like a recent list that did well played a couple of thought seizes, some collective brutalities, which I think are decent, and Unmoored Ego, a card that I think is pretty solid in this matchup. Yeah, Unmoored Ego seems fine. A lot of the Urza list are, as a lot of decks in general, are transitioning into playing some number of Okos of the main deck are sideboard, and Urza list are playing those on the sideboard. When you're playing a lot of zero and one cost artifacts that have another added benefit. Oko's really strong, just being able to turn those into a little, assemble your own army, even through something like a Stony Silence. Which, speaking of Stony Silence, our Collector Oof, both of those cards I think are decent against the uh, Urza Lisk. A lot of them sometimes will keep hands uh, that have some heavy color requirements that really lean on Arkham's Astro Astrolab, or Astrolab to function. Uh, it's not a, like, I win card, and I feel like that is something that's happened 
is that we've come in modern, uh, we just came out of a really, really degenerate format where people expect sideboard cards to just win you the game. And we're kind of going back into like your sideboard cards need to be relevant, but it's not just going to be like a lights out thing, like a ley line of the void or something. Of note, a lot of uh, more recent Titan Shift decks are making use of Field of the Dead, and so you'll see some snow-covered basics. I have not, we have not seen any thus far from Ezra, um, which suggests maybe no Field of Ruin is an or fi Field of the Dead, excuse me, is an alternate win condition for Ezra, which would make Unmoored Ego a little bit stronger in the matchup. Oh, that's really interesting. I've definitely seen that in almost all of the Amulet Titan lists because it's so easy to just have lands that are differently named, um, but I, I haven't seen that a lot in the Titan Shift decks, because I feel like you do have to have a certain number of, like, stomping ground type lands. Right. You can you can get four land types just from having, you know, the two different types of forests and the two different, you know, types of mountains, and then between stomping ground, cinder glade, um, Valakut, and fetches themselves, you can make it to the... Uh, the requisite um, seven land types. Yeah, it does seem like that is a little bit of a stretch, especially if you don't know if you have to lean on that. If it, it, A lot of times in the early game, you really don't want to fetch for your basic forest. Um, so it seems interesting. I'm curious how that plays out in terms of sideboarding decisions that you make in-game for lands that you get. Um, yeah, I'd like to talk to someone that knows the deck and has played it with Field of the Dead about the decisions. Yeah, and we see a sideboard Ashiok coming in. Ashiok is a slam dunk in this matchup as a lot of what Ezra is looking to do requires library searching. And Mike not ticking down that Ashiok, so kind of asking Ezra to answer this with a couple cards. So Ashiok prevents players um, from searching their library. It minuses one to uh, mill the top four cards of either player's library, and then uh, it'll exile an opponent's, each opponent's graveyard. Yeah, this card is a house in both this matchup and against uh, the deck that I play, Amulet Titan. I, I see people oftentimes do this where they activate the Ashiok, and I gotta say I'm, I'm more on the side of Let's just keep it at the highest loyalty we can. I think it's doing the most with its static ability. I 100% agree with you uh, with that assessment. Um, okay. It makes sense in this case. Okay. It does feel like a lot of times people minus Ashiok thinking, oh, my opponent depends on these cards to win the game. So then if they're not in you know their graveyard or their library anymore, they can't win the game. But it's there's so much variance to that where if the static ability is relevant, you almost want to just keep it at the highest maximum loyalty. Except Mike is able to bounce it back to the hand and then deploy it again. Looks like maybe there is another outcome in Mike's hand. Maybe we'll see that fired off this next end step. Yeah, we're really missing the token generator from Mike. So able to draw a lot of cards, the cards don't really do anything. Uh, Mike notably mentioning that he may actually be looking to kind of hit some number of mountains, which actually can, in if this game goes to late game, milling mountains can actually make a difference in Ezra's ability to pump out damage, especially going through the scape shift route. Uh, usually I would disagree with the minusing Ashiok, but with Mike being able to bounce Ashiok to kind of reset it, it seems like a fine game plan. Yeah, agree. We have a response to Paradoxical Outcome. Okay. And looks like we Ancient Grudged and Mox Opal. Seems... Uh, I mean, I, I guess it seems reasonable, although definitely doesn't feel like a lot when your opponent's drawing five cards. Yeah, I feel like it is a bit of a trap um, to bring in 
gets one R2 shot artifact hate against these Urza decks. Uh, and I do feel like that is kind of why they got to be really popular is people kind of don't, I mean, folks are starting to, if you play a lot of uh, competitive magic, you're starting to understand what the game plan is, how to beat the decks. There's a, there's a lot of cards in the decks that you kind of can't ignore. Um, and there's a few payoffs that are really important. Uh, Urza and the Thopter generators our token generators being the real big payoff cards here. And so just blowing up some artifacts doesn't really matter like at all to the deck. So now we get Urza with a <laughs> That is one buddy. of those payoffs. Yeah, probably not really the payoff that you're wanting uh, for Mike right now. I think you would have rather had um, like a Sihili or a Psy um, when you've outcomed a couple times, but... Not bad. <laughs> yeah, seems like a fine turn. Take a little scry off the uh, Witching Well. Another Witching Well is one that if I could blow up with um, an Ancient Grudge, that might, might be a good target. Witching Well, one blue, it's an artifact, comes into play. Scry two, you can sacrifice it for two and a blue to draw two cards. Three and a blue to draw two cards. Almost one of the cards that was kind of the the genesis for creating this deck. I know got a bunch of our artifact brewers very excited when this card was spoiled. Yeah, when you're able to turn your artifacts into, you know, mock sapphires, you can activate the draw ability pretty easily. So the question is, can we get, and this is the tough part, if we can't get two Valakut triggers into this Ashiok in a turn, it might make, Mike's, Mike may be able to just keep bouncing this Ashiok to refresh the loyalty. Now there is a escape shift in, Urza's, in Ezra's hand. Um, which Ezra probably really wanted to get this Ashiok off the table. Yep. Problem is, a lot of how the deck does it is by searching multiple lands a turn. And I think there also is a basic fountain in Ezra's hand, so let's see if Mike's going to have the heads-up play of bouncing, or is able to bounce this Ashiok at all. It's possible that Mike will be able to mill out uh, Ezra this turn if there is a paradoxical outcome in yeah. hand. Yeah, Grinding Station, one of those cards that is able to sometimes win the game when you have an outcome. Um, you tap it, it puts the top three cards of target player's library in the graveyard. And whenever you play an artifact, untap it. Combos really well with Paradoxical Outcome where you return all your zero casting cost artifacts to your hand, if you so desire, and draw a card for each of them. Notable, not bestie, bestie of Hogak. Oh, there's the Valakut down. We get. And another Ashiok. Cast for free because of Urza. And Ezra, I'm sure, is just sighing right now. <laughs> A lightning bolt would be a decent draw with Ezra. Lightning bolts plus mountain probably equals win at this point, depending on how many mountains are left in Ezra's deck. Yep. There is a paradoxical outcome. So if uh, Mike can get a hold of a fetch land and has additional copies of Mystic Sanctuary in deck, he can toss the paradoxical on top. So an Explore was drawn by Ezra. So this is another card that will let him potentially land two land drops in a turn. Oh, yeah. However, one of the lands in Ezra's hand is a Fetch, which is not oh. going to do it. What was that pickup? Okay, that was great. That was a Prismatic Omen, which actually will let this work. So if Ezra can resolve the Omen and then play the... The fetch land after the omen is resolved will count as a mountain for the purposes of Alakut. 
Okay, yeah, this does look like a win here if Ezra is able to sequence it correctly. Yep. This is huge for Ezra. And you can see Mike's maybe feeling a little bit of the a little bit of the pressure here. Felt like he had a good lock on the game. But in if you if you don't win against these Titan Shift decks, there's just a way that the deck can like find it it can just wriggle out of a pickle. And it looks like Chad's asking about uh, Mike using Urza without shuffling. And yeah, if your deck is already randomized, there's no need to re-randomize it uh, when you activate Urza if you don't have any information on the uh, Right. The it's contents. kind of a quality of life thing. Um, you know, if you're using an auto shuffler for the digital game, it's extremely easy. But some of these games can get grindy. We have 45 minute rounds here at Guardian and it can save it can save the time. So Ezra dropping the scape shift here. So this is where we see, does Mike actually have any sort of counter magic in their deck? And we'll see if the milling that Mike has done makes a difference. Although it looks like Ezra only needs to find, this looks like six, six oh, mountains. Oh, don't, don't, sorry. was there a Valakut that we're sacking there? Oh. What's that? Curious oh, actually, you know what? Ezra can just get a bunch of Valakuts. He's got a uh, Prismatic Omen. So all of the Valakuts also count as mountains. So it really doesn't it doesn't actually matter which lands Ezra gets here. That's a lot. Yeah, this will be <laughs> 36. Yeah, 36 damage, and Ezra will close out the match against Mike. So a match that we really felt like Mike had locked down, I but... um. I do feel like that is one of the, whenever you have an archetype that then goes in different directions and then like it evolves is now we've basically got this deck that does like, it's Mike can assemble an I win situation with outcome plus grinding station plus Urza, but I think grinding station might be a one of in the deck and it's really not, it's leaning very, very lightly on that sort of pseudo combo that's not even 100% um, like de deterministic. Um, and I feel like that is, you know, that was the strength of the Urza's decks that now it pr you're maybe shoring up other matchups by going in this direction of just drawing a lot of cards, generating a lot of value. Um, but definitely it makes you, I think, weaker to a deck like Titan Shift. Absolutely. Well, it looks like we got plenty of time here, so I'm going to go ahead and venture forth and go and try and find us a backup match. All right. Good luck. We will return here shortly with another match on camera.